Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and uh, we're going to look in on the 55 gallon bin today. Going to do a little bit of a harvest and look in on the uh, feedings from the last two times that are on the polar ends of the bin. So let me go unplug that fan. It's probably going to mess up the ability for you to hear me, and I'll be right back. All right, that's better. So, so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to just put this flat tray on here so you can see how much castings I'm getting. And I have been um, taking these right here, and I've been putting these in a nursery bin because I don't really need castings right now, so I figured I could take time and um, let any of the castings hatch that were in here because this is the quarter inch screen and I'm very sure that the castings are going through and so are the cocoons. So I got just over a handful that first time. So it's probably a little bit less than 50%. It would probably be more if it was a little drier. I'm putting them off to the side here in a different bin until I get back to the feeding zone. All of my other bins and trays are in use. I have to wait for my new ones to come in. So you can kind of see I'm getting about this much every time I do it. This is not normally what I do, but like I said in previous videos, I am trying to make a little bit of space in here for my extra uh, food scraps that I'm getting. And I'm just skimming right off the top where it's been exposed to the fan and it's drying. I'm not digging down deep to get these castings. I'm just grabbing exactly what's on top and then that's it. So, again, not e really even a handful. And I think, you know, you can see they're pretty good and fine, but the castings or the cocoons from the smaller worms are also smaller. So, um, you can't really expect them to get caught up in the, the screen. So, but that's fine. We're, I'm accomplishing what I want to accomplish. And that's fine. So if I'm only skimming off, you know, a couple handfuls, then that's fine too. It's a couple handfuls of bedding and food that I can add to the bin. I think this is the last one. I have been coming down here and kind of fluffing up this uh, middle worm highway, as I've been calling it, because I fed at the far end and the far end. And you can tell this level has been going down. If you look at the level over here on the side, you can tell I've taken off more than an inch. So I will put these castings aside and put them in the nursery in a little bit. But let's let's keep looking, see what we've got in here, make sure that we're getting some air to the system. Anytime I find any big food, I'll throw it to one end or the other. But you can tell it's getting a little, a little wet. Um, you know, and I haven't added any moisture at all to this middle part that hasn't had any food in the middle here. No additions of bedding. 
and yet it kind of still seems like it is picking up moisture. I'm almost, you know, I haven't done an experiment yet, but I would almost bet that they are drawing moisture from the environment. I don't think that it's just the the casting is not drying out. I literally think that they are sucking in moisture. So it becomes even more important for me to come down here and fluff this up um, to make sure that everything stays a good moisture. So let me turn you around and I will show you the older feedings. Okay. Let's see what we've got down at this end. So this is what's been coming through the, the screen from previous um, uh, times me coming down here and harvesting. Mix that through. So let's see what that last, not the last feeding, but the feeding before that, see what that is still doing. Lots of worms still. Maybe bread. Looks like bread or mashed potatoes. You're still seeing, I mean, you saw the concentration of worms in the middle there where there had not been a feeding for well over a month. And then looking at the concentration of feeding down here, that is, you know, two or three months old. I think that was a potato. You can tell the worms are still very, very interested. Uh, you know, maybe we can't see that there's a whole bunch of food, but they definitely can. Uh, there still is apparently food that is enough worthy for this many worms to still be very active down here after two or three weeks. So, you know, again, cautionary tale to people who are new to worm farming and you go into it with the expectation that they're going to eat their weight in food every day or every week. Look, another avocado tree. Um, and then you overfeed your bins and possibly you could, you know, lose your worms. Uh, they don't really eat their weight in food a day. Um, it depends on the temperature, the season. Um, you know, if the bin is not cycled yet. That was a potato. So if the bin is, is very, very new, um, you absolutely should not go by any rule other than the rule of observation. If you observe the worms need more food, then give them more food. If they do not look like they need, if the food is still there um, and you have a new bin, do not. I'm, and when I say new bin, I'm talking about the first six months, easily six months um, if you start with like a pound of worms. So. Um, don't expect them to follow any of those typical rules of one pound per, you know, one pound of food. Don't, don't do that to yourself because you will end up with a stinky bin and possibly dead worms or worms trying to escape the bin. You just have to use your own observation. That is really your most powerful tool to be successful with your worms. Um, they're, they don't really follow any rules and different kinds of worms are successful with different kinds of food. Um, you know, if, if all your food stock was just kitchen scraps and all you had were African night crawlers, you should keep your expectations low. Um, if you have just leaves and uh, shredded paper, you might have bigger expectations for those African night crawlers. If you have just red wigglers and all you have is paper scraps, your expectations should be similarly low. Uh, this bin has a mix of red wigglers, European night crawlers, and blue worms, as well as the accessory critters that live in these bins. Um, you know, like your pill bugs and your um, mites. Now, some of the mites eat mold. I mean, there's thousands of kinds of mites. So everybody says, oh my God, I've got mites. Call the National Guard. Well, they may not be the kind of mites that will end up hurting your plants. Um, there are many, 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 many kinds of mites. Just go ahead and Google uh, how many different kinds of mites are there. And really, unless you have a microscope or you have a degree in 
entomology, I would not count on knowing what kind of worms you have in your bin, honestly. Whether they're red or white or, or brown, um, I mean, that would be like saying, oh, there's a, there's a brown bird in my yard or a black bird in my yard, and it could be 20 different things. Just because it's a black bird doesn't mean it's a black bird. Um, so there's my spiel on worm bin critters. Uh, but getting back to the original point, which is how much do you feed the worms? And I would say after you've had the bin for six months and you have you know, increased your worm population and you have also um, have all the necessary biological critters living in here, you know, bacteria, mold, um, pill bugs, mites, fill in the blank. Um, then you can start looking at some sort of rules. But even though I've been doing this for years, I still try not to um, follow any kind of hard fast rule because honestly it it's not going to work all the time even my worms after years behave differently in July than they do in December the temperature is different in here um, the worms don't eat as much when it is colder etc so there's a lot of things to consider um, what kind of worms you have what the temperature is in there, is it a very mature bin, what is the food you eat, or the food they eat, which in my case is what food I eat, or my friends eat, as the case may be. So um, you can see there's a lot of worms down here. They still have a good deal of food. So this end of the bin is looking pretty good. So I will take all of these worm scraps, or these food scraps, and I'm going to bury them all in one place again, keep the worms concentrated. Um, moisture down here looks really good <clears throat> at this end of the bin. I mean, not good like you'd want to harvest it good, but it's a good moisture for them to live in. So I'm going to take the food scraps and put them all in one place over here, cover them back up, and then we can go to the opposite end of the bin and see what that newest feeding is doing after a week. Alrighty, you can see you get these little hitchhiker little baby worms. Alright, so move my sticks. Let's start seeing where the food is running into it right away. I'm not sure what this was, but uh, I didn't want to mess with the bag because it was such a sticky mess. Um, but now after the, week, the worms have been in it after a week, I think I can pull that out. Clearly this, this food is not as far along. You can still see um, I'm not sure. This is a kiwi, maybe? Yeah, that's a kiwi. But they definitely are in here, and they're working on it. It's my sticks. And it's more wet down here um, with the feeding that I had. Had watermelon as well as some other stuff that was in here. And... I, let me see if I can flip it the other way around. I'm just finding that kiwi and whatever was in that bag. I'm not sure what this is. Start collecting food scraps up there. But this end is definitely wetter. Not bad wetter, but would not want it to get any more so for fear of it becoming aerobic. So that's whatever was in that bag. As far as I can tell, they may have taken that entire watermelon out. I'm not seeing... Maybe that one green piece was part of the, the skin or something, but this bin does an amazing job. 
Not sure what that was, but it was red. But yeah, oh, there's a little bit. Now this is all that's left of that watermelon. This is just that skin. Isn't that crazy? But as you've seen in, in some of my other videos, the number of worms in here is probably 10 pounds. So they don't, uh, not, they're not, you're not going to scare them with any food. I've, you know, I was worried at first when I started really pushing it with the food in this bin, but um, now I'm not worried. I mean, they took on a half a watermelon last week, and uh, there's no sign of it. I mean, except for the little bitty green pieces. There's really nothing, nothing to see of that watermelon. So I'm going to keep digging here, making sure I'm not missing anything. Before I tuck the, the food back in this corner over there. And then I think I am going to feed in the middle this time, just so that I give the worms enough time to finish this stuff over here and then the middle worm highway we will feed in the middle of the highway how's that sound all right so if you guys have any questions about you know what I've been talking about with worm bins and their cycles and species and food feel free to put that in the comments below um, I think the dialogue is very um, fruitful. It helps me know what kind of videos and what kind of topics to talk about while I'm doing the videos and also you know can get some of your questions answered. Um, if you've been a member of my worm family for very long you know I get back to the comments fairly quickly sometimes almost immediately if I'm doing it when you make a comment but definitely in a couple of days or a week at the worst more maybe if I'm on vacation. All right, so we're going to feed right here at the center line where this seam is. And this time, believe it or not, I have another watermelon. So what I'm going to do so that we don't end up with too wet, I'm going to carve this out and I am going to put dry cardboard in here, dry shredded cardboard. Um, dang it. All right, I think I just found what to do with this piece of plastic. It is now going to become the hole that holds this hole shut. It'll be a plug. All right, let me grab my cardboard. So that is straight out of the shredder. It is obviously, it's nice and dry and hopefully will wick up any moisture from the watermelon I'm going to feed them. All right, take the sticker off the best that I can. I don't have a proper knife down here. that's that's enough I think but I am going to put prepared bedding on top of here because um, I don't have any more shredded cardboard that's not so this is my prepared bedding it's been sitting for about a week now you can tell it's junk mail food boxes Amazon boxes primarily and it also has um, you can tell my hands here it's got coconut coir in it as well as kelp meal as well as a little bit of molasses, like a shot glass in a five gallon bucket of water. Um, somebody asked about that. And then uh, eggshell. So for about a 10 gallon tote, um, 
takes about four gallons of water um, to fill it over time. You put this in, you put more water, put more of this, more water. Um, when I've got it all filled up and it's about this consistency, then, um, which is a little too wet, come to think of it, then I will add the kelp meal and the molasses in the water and then the eggshell and then mix it all up with the coconut coir until I, I can feel the kind of graininess to it. I just put enough in to do that so the paper doesn't stick together like, let me find a clump, I've got clumps. So this is what happens when you don't use coconut coir. Not that, you get off there. Um, is the paper will stick together and it'll be difficult for the worms to get at it. All right guys, as an addendum about coconut coir, this is the coconut coir that I purchase, that I get from Amazon, that is in my Amazon store that is linked below. Um, this is five kilograms. And this is what you get. Let me back up. It is still not completely absorbed by water. Um, basically, I put five gallons of water in here, and I have to continue to put water in here to get it to be a usable um, in a usable state. Now this brand I've never had any problems with it having too much salt uh, just because I'm a helicopter parent when I use it for my worms I do rinse it um, before I use it with them. But this is a good good way that if your worm bin gets too wet you add some of this coconut coir that is dry like this and it will suck up a ton of water. Like I said a five kilogram block fills this bin to the point where it's busting out the sides and it's still not all hydrated. So I know a lot of people look at the price of it and they're like, geez, I don't want to pay 30 bucks for this. It used to be 20 to be fair, but you know, during these times everything's more expensive. Um, but yeah, um, this is a lot of coconut coir, a lot. And I will use maybe a two gallon bucket, I don't know, every month and you know once it's hydrated fully you know it's obviously much bigger because it's busting this tote. Anyway I just wanted to give you a, a little bit of a, a background on the coconut fiber. How much do you get when you buy a particular amount and the five kilogram block which your postal people will hate you for if you buy several of them. Um, look how big it is. This is huge and this is not in a usable state for what I use it for. This would be a good state if you wanted to dry out a bin quickly uh, to rescue your worms from, I don't know, suffocating in an anaerobic bin. This would definitely suck up the moisture as well as create a lot of aeration. Alright, that's, that's my whole spiel on coconut coir. So you don't want that. You want the worms to be able to get at the bedding. So if there's a little bit of coconut coir or peat, either way, um, then usually will have a better time of going through bedding if that is your goal. If you don't have a lot of bedding around then maybe you do want it to go slower. Um, with the whole COVID thing I've, I've more than got into the habit of buying things online and having them shipped to me. So for really for this for for my bins I'm doing what is my goals. My goals are to keep things out of the landfill and to make worm castings um, so that I can fertilize my plants and bonsais. Um, if you have different goals, then you will do different things. And there are, you know, if you want big huge worms to go fishing with, um, this is not how it's going to happen, honestly. My worms are little bitty because they're small and mighty and there's a lot of them. Uh, my, my worms tend to be this big. I mean, that's a European nightcrawler right there. And the ones I just bought from Northeast Worms was probably 10 times this size. Now, I don't know if this worm will ever get any bigger. Maybe, maybe not. But eating what I give it to eat, this is what size they stay. If you want ginormous worms, you're going to need to use some kind of worm chow. Um, so, you know, your goals is what, one of the biggest things you need to consider when you are doing your worm bin. For me, I'm getting rid of food and I'm making fertilizer. I'm keeping things out of the landfill. Those are my goals. So if your goals are different, then you know you will obviously need to follow a different path. But 
That is it for me today. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon, guys. But thank you for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.